On a 2018 episode of Raw, WWE dropped a huge bomb. During a segment where Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn asked Kurt Angle to hire them on his show, he replied with, But I hear that TNA is hiring. <laughs> this was a big deal, as it was the first time the company has willingly mentioned Impact Wrestling, a corporation that was once its rival. Although, the very first time TNA was brought up is when Caval, formerly known as Low Key at Impact Wrestling, mentioned it at NXT. Because I'm the only reason for some total nonstop action. Well, after, after, by the way, <laughs> at, that, by the way, that was stupid. Wrestling fans love CM Punk, and they proved it once again during his spectacular AEW debut. But the crowd has been chanting his name in WWE for years now. And during one of these instances in 2016, Stephanie McMahon has had enough and decided to respond with, So if you guys could keep that up for about two minutes and 15 seconds, you'd last one second longer than Punk did. This was, of course, a jab at Punk's short-lived UFC career, where he lost in just two minutes and 14 seconds. To be honest, whether you like Stephanie's character or not, this was a savagely executed roast. Nobody is bigger than the WWE. On an NXT episode this year, Austin Theory and Johnny Gargano barged in on William Regal's meeting with Scarlett. After the rude interruption, Austin asked Scarlett if those were real. Those are huge. Are they real? I mean, yeah. A few seconds later, we learned that he was obviously referring to her very long nails. And yes, this absolutely felt like a 2009 episode of Raw all over again, back when we had the Divas division. Those are the biggest nails I've ever seen. In 2008, Katie Lee and Paul Burchill debuted together, and during their first segment, they seemed a bit close to each other. Nothing crazy here, just a couple being a couple. Or so we thought. The moment Katie referred to Paul as her brother is the moment everyone's jaw dropped. And while it was never explicitly said that they're in love, they did seem to be very comfortable with each other, and lines such as, my beautiful brother, didn't help the situation at all. The most beautiful man in the world, my big brother Paul. Thankfully, this storyline dropped quite quickly. If John Cena came out with me and my brother, he'd be having a lot more than just a little fun. Are you okay? I'm fine, I just, uh threw up in my mouth a little bit. On a SmackDown episode this year, Roman Reigns was ranting on the mic about John Cena. He went on to talk about how repetitive the superstar was and compared his gimmick to missionary position every single night. That was quite funny and it's nice to see something relatively non-PG on the show. It's like missionary position every single night. John Cena, before the PG era, was truly a sight to see. During a 2006 episode of Raw, Cena decided to viciously diss Lita and referred to her with a certain word we can't mention here. He then went on a roll with a plethora of silly puns at the expense of the former women's champion. She's not just a regular she's a magical red-headed oh. While the jokes were absolutely ridiculous, it was quite entertaining and truly captured the essence of the ruthless aggression era. And gee for gonorrhea, which was a little <laughs> present that the <laughs> left behind. The next entry probably goes down as one of the most disgusting moments in WWE history. In 2006, JBL got a new assistant called Jillian, who had a huge mole on her face. Take a look at this. Well, on an episode of SmackDown, the boogeyman decided to eat the mole off Jillian's face. The crowd was absolutely disgusted. But on the bright side, at least now she doesn't have a mole. He's eating the damn thing! He's eating that mole off her damn face! Female athletes of today are changing the industry every day and are finally being recognized more for their accomplishments. That hasn't always been the case, though, especially in wrestling. Trish Stratus has been hailed as one of the greatest female wrestlers. But back in 2001, the company made her do some racy things such as the time Vince McMahon made her bark like a dog while on all fours, and later asked her to take off her clothes. Yikes! Damn it, bark like a dog! <laughs> when you step into a roast battle with this seven-time women's champion, you are bound to lose. Trish Stratus was a great heel during her run and proved that she can clap back at anyone, even to this day. During a segment between Elias and Trish, Elias decided to make fun of her hometown of Toronto. 
It's kind of like the Stanley Cup. They'll never see it in their lifetime. <laughs> Trish, without hesitation, responded and totally destroyed him right then and there. Kind of like you uh, winning a WWE championship. <laughs> see, we warned you that she's a savage. Well, look what we have here. We have the greatest women's champion ever. But this wasn't the only time WWE was insensitive. During the 2006 feud between Rey Mysterio and Randy Orton, the latter mocked Mysterio's friend, the late Eddie Guerrero, numerous times, including the time he uttered the words, Eddie's down there. In hell! Despite the moment happening only a few months after the superstar's death, the writers unfortunately still decided to implement it into their storyline. For the last week, I've had to hear how horrible and nasty of a person I am because of the things that I said about Eddie Guerrero. You would think that the writers learned their lesson after receiving a huge amount of backlash, but think again. During a 2015 contract signing between Paige and Charlotte Flair, Charlotte said how she will continue to fight just was once again a highly sensitive topic. And it's quite easy to see how hesitant Paige herself was of saying those words. You know what? I'm just trying to put all this ugliness behind me. Perhaps one of the most savage moments in WWE history was when The Miz absolutely went off during the 2016 Talking Smack interview. At the time, The Miz was an intercontinental champion, and he wasn't being showcased and utilized enough. After Daniel Bryan referred to him as a coward, The Miz lost it, went off script, and verbally attacked the general manager, after which Daniel decided to walk off the set. No, don't you walk away from me, Daniel. Don't you walk away. I'm the one that loves the fans. The segment left quite a big impact and is still being talked about five years later. All you see is what's on the surface. You don't see what goes on back there. In the 2019 episode of Raw, Razor and Drake Maverick decided to interrupt Apollo Crews' backstage interview. That's when Apollo asked Razor on how he manages to make his puppet talk like that, referring to Drake. Crews went ahead and listed a few possibilities himself, one of which included sticking his hand up his you-know-what. And you also know that this is nowhere near PG. Hey, how do you get your little puppet to talk like that? Or do you stick your hand up his... Ah, 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 ah. In 2005, Kurt Angle and Booker T had a feud, and while giving a backstage interview following his brawl with Booker and his wife, Charmel, Kurt Angle decided to say, Booker, I want to have with your wife. Not only that, the storyline consisted of Angle stalking Charmel, so it goes without saying that it was extremely disturbing. And while we're aware this was during the ruthless aggression era, it's still very difficult to comprehend how these segments actually made it to air. I'm talking, you know, that, 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 that kind of beastiality stuff. Oh! 